All right, time for another DrenaPhysics.com, DebatePhysics.com also, but we can't find any reasonable debating going on. So they take no responsibility for anything they claim they're proving or anything they claim that has been proven in the sense that, obviously, taken to its logical conclusion, it produces paradoxes. So they have this idea that there's such a thing as, whatever, canceling momentum and that you can somehow make free momentum. So I can bang, you know, a light car into a heavy car. And this light car has 100 momentum of motion. And it can make the heavy car leave with 150. I mean, clearly not good, not sensible. That's free momentum. And momentum is power. There's just no way around it. It is power. Uh, it's weight. So I've increased the weight, the force, weight, somehow, magically. I've made more weight in the universe in one direction. And I get 50 back, which means, you know, it's just more weight moving the other way. Now, obviously, I contend that when the, the 100 hits the 3 mass, it only gives it 3 quarters of its weight and it keeps a quarter for itself. And so it's 2575, not 150, 50. All right, so simple enough argument. Uh, we've been over and over again all the ways you can do the experiment. They use little carts with wheels, okay, that have angular uh, momentum, so that's not good. Then they use air tracks, and uh, as I proved with Professor Lewin's experiment, uh, they're suspect. Um, and clearly the air track is introducing energy so any tilt in the carts will create a thrust okay that can give a cart more energy um so that's suspect um so they ignore all these arguments uh, if they were writing this as a scientific paper they know they'd have to meet some sort of scrutiny and they don't think they have to meet any scrutiny so i haven't watched this piece of shit video somebody again insisted i go look at it um Again, this, this bar character is a liar and a cheater, okay? He's left up videos where he made obvious mistakes. He doesn't understand the systems. He doesn't understand the dynamics. And he's left up videos that are just plain deceptive. And he doesn't care. And so right there, he's not a, an honest player in this conversation. All right. It's okay to be an advocate, but if you have to cheat in your advocacy, well, <laughs> you know, nobody should have to accept that. Um... So right here, he puts a ruler on top of, okay? So he's got a pendulum. He doesn't tell us how long the pendulum is. Nothing about it, really. All we know is there's a one-mass marble and a three-mass marble, and just about nothing else is provided as information. And he puts a ruler on top of it. So he just ruins the whole idea because you can't do that. The distance at a distance is smaller than the distance in real life. So you can't use these numbers as actual measurements. Even if you knew the length of the pendulum, these numbers would be useless. Okay. So he can't even do the experiment correctly. And that's what all of these guys indicate, that they're not about doing it correctly. They're engineering it to come out their way. Um, and so then we've already been over this and over this. So this is another reason why I have no obligation to respond to first people who are deliberately and willfully deceptive, leave up live videos and don't care. And then on top of that, <laughs> all right, they pretend I haven't already made these arguments. And so why should I have to make them over and over and over again? I mean, it's ridiculous. So I've already pointed out that we already know some basic physics. We all have learned through this process. We learned about angular momentum and how it stores energy and can give an object that has uh, something you can bow 30 miles an hour, but if it has heavy wheels, the 30 miles an hour means it really has the momentum of something going 40 miles an hour because it has a bunch of momentum stored in those wheels, angular momentum and that you really can't transfer it that easily in some systems. You have to have a mechanism to transfer it. So the simple argument is, <laughs> is that, yes, there's mathematical theory that you could use to figure all this out. You know, you, use, you can use the arc, okay, the angle at which you're turned, and that'll tell you what position on this uh, circle you're at. And uh, they can calculate all of this stuff, like, you know, this distance versus this distance, and this is all mathematically doable, where you can detect how this height, okay, by doing some math, okay, by the distance this way will tell you the height this way. 
And the simple argument is at the bottom of the curve, you get lots of energy this way, and you're not fighting gravity. So this is really easy motion, okay? Very little energy used to go here. A high amount of energy to go here. Any motion this way up here has a huge component against gravity. So it's got a huge force it's fighting. So very little force being fought here, a lot of force the higher you go. And a simple argument is, is the position from which he launches the object, the idea here for this simple equation in terms of finding velocities is really just about this height. And the argument is, is this four times the height or is it eight times the height? So does it go four times higher or is it eight times higher? in gravity and then when these two things hit does this object swing okay here okay which would be <laughs> let's say that's um would be the mark for four times well that would be the mark for one half the velocity uh, i mean one quarter the velocity and this would be the mark for one half the velocity something like that so this would be where it would go if it had one quarter this is where it would go if it had one half because this would be four times the difference this would be eight times the difference. So this line would be eight times smaller than this line. This line would be four times higher than this line. And that's how you have to really do this experiment. There's no real way to detect the absolute velocities except for averages. So you have to watch the thing move a whole distance. And obviously you can't watch them move the same distance because he has the ruler in the wrong place. So that won't work. Um, obviously when this one's up here, it's going to be closer to the camera too, which is a real problem, you know. So you really can't get a velocity reading that way. Um, but regardless, the you have to do this the right way, and he just insists on doing it the wrong way. And so he's just basically saying, "Well, look, I've measured this this motion and this motion, and he's created a notion of how fast it was going when it hit." And there's no way to know how fast it's going when it's hitting because, frankly, it's going faster and faster and faster. Every little mark is going faster. So if you take uh, an average over, say, this distance, that average will be below the actual speed, obviously, because it's going slower here and it's going faster here. So there's really almost no point in taking an average over this distance because that won't tell you the actual velocity of the object. You have to get its maximum velocity. All right, uh, and compare it to these things, or better yet, use the absolute position. So the position will tell you. So if he filmed it the other way and got these angles, you know, what's this angle from 90 degrees here, uh, from 90 degrees, and what's the angle of the, as it, as it uh, swings up, what's its angle? If he got those angles, well then the math, there is math to do that, I don't know it, <laughs> you know, I can't give you the formula, but it's, it exists as a formula. Um, or you could just do this. You could just draw the damn thing, okay, on a piece of graph paper, and then you just count the little squares, you know. You just count the distance. How high is this compared to this? All right. So anyway, the simple argument is, obviously I'm arguing that when they leave, it's 75, okay, 100 goes in. 75 goes this way, 25 goes this way, okay, and you conserve the momentum, okay? You can't make more momentum. Their argument is, is that 150 goes this way, okay, and that 50 goes this way, and that when they come back together again, so they're arguing that I could crash a car, one with 150,000 momentums, and one with 50 momentums, 50,000, I could crash those two cars, and if I made them out of um, elastic materials, you know, materials that that will bounce or that um, are hard and will not yield, uh, that I could expect to only get 100 out. That only one car will pop out at one half the total momentum. Now we know if the two cars crash into each other, there's going to be 200 momentums worth of bent fenders. That's an absolute fact it's going to be twice as much as if I did 50 or 50. If I did 50 and 50, I'll get a certain amount of crushed fender. And if I do 150, 50, I'm going to get twice as much crushed fender. So we know that if we collect the energy directly, as in collected as bent fenders, um, we're going to get 200 momentum. And they're saying that if I can somehow make it rubbery, then I'm only going to get 100 back.
I say it's obviously stupid. It obviously doesn't make any sense. They want to force it to make sense. That's their business. It's not my business. But I'm just saying, if you're going to do this experiment and claim something, you have to get these velocities really accurate. And you're not doing anything close to trying to get real accuracy. So, fuck you, basically. I'm not going to do this. <clears throat> so you can keep suggesting that I go look at these <clears throat> morons videos, but we already know they've made, whatever, 75 total videos, 100 maybe. And we know that a huge proportion of them have fatal simple errors. Okay, they're not complex errors, they're fatal simple errors. So, so I'll deal with the, you know, this recent Gosling video. It was so goddamn stupid. I mean, you're just saying, look, we've already been over all this stuff. So he takes the experiment of banging something into a pendulum <clears throat> to, a, to a ludicrous place. He goes somewhere that just there's absolutely no point in doing. Uh, that one's done. Uh, annoying that these freaking markers are not as reliable. Um, anyway, <clears throat> all right, so you have a pendulum, and now you're going to use a ramp to hit things. So obviously you've lost the advantage of the pendulum because, you know, that's getting rid of the angular rotation. So he takes a one mass and he puts a giant thing around it, okay? So it's going to roll, all right? And then he takes a two mass, or three mass, or I think it is, all right? And there's no giant thing wrapped around it. It's not elastic in any way. It's a hard piece of metal, and this is a probably a one mass. So he's going to sit there and claim that somehow the three hits the one and all the energy goes into the one, which obviously we know doesn't happen. The three continues on its way, okay, and a portion of the energy goes into the one, okay. And that's what really happens. So you can't measure how far this goes and say, all oh, the energy went into it. We know that doesn't happen. A second problem or flaw is this thing is rotating, so it doesn't have the full velocity because part of the velocity is trapped in the rotation. So by rotating, it's not really going the speed you would expect, you know, the four distance. The distance thing doesn't mean much when you're putting the, the motion in angular rotation. So what's the angular rotation going to do? Is it really going to push the object this way? There's no axle here, so there's no axle to collect the angular rotation's momentum. And so it's just going to hit down. It's not going to hit this way. It's going to hit down. It's just going to hit down on the pendulum. It's not going to really push it that way. Yes, it'll get some energy will be converted and it will flex off the torque of the downward motion, but it'll be a very uneven and incomplete transfer. So you're losing basically all the angular momentum. It's not going to be transferred. And then this big stupid thing is all rubbery and it bounces backwards and, <laughs> you know, after it hits. Um, but yeah, it's basically a rubber ball. So it's completely different than this material. So the whole thing is just idiotic. Why introduce angular rotation again, which you don't want to do, because then the four to one distance thing doesn't mean anything anymore. And uh, especially when the objects are different size and different weights. So, you know, too stupid. Uh, let's see what else is there to say. I mean, the friction, are, you know, you're introducing all kinds of crap that there's no reason to introduce. Stick with the pendulum on pendulums. Do not, you know, convert it into uh, rolling objects into pendulums. Not a great idea. <sighs> okay. Um, so, should I bother with... I don't think there's any other comments worth mentioning. Oh, shit. I was paused all that time. Uh, I wonder how long I was paused. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, there's the Tyler comment. So, yeah, hi, Tyler, leave me alone. Um, I'm not here to debunk your wacky theories, obviously. I mean, the problem I have is conventional physics. That's the monster. That's the big religion that needs to be destroyed. I don't need to go after all the little cults. Okay, the little cults don't matter. It's the big giant industrial complex that must be destroyed, blah, 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 blah. So I'm really not interested in your pet theories. Okay, so um, fuck off, please. Uh, you know, what can I say? He doesn't take any, he, he doesn't, he's not a civil human being. He will not respond in any kind of civil way to anything. He takes everything personally. 
and thinks he has some authority to tell everybody else what they think and what they believe and all that crap because he's got a, you know, he's a little schizophrenic, which is fine. Like I said, I got nothing. I'm the nicest guy in the world. I don't care if you're schizophrenic as long as you don't point your fucking gun at me, okay? But if you're playing with your gun in my living room and you're a schizophrenic, well, nah, I'm not interested, frankly. I'll throw a banana out the window and try to get you to go the fuck away. So leave me the fuck alone. All right, anyway. <laughs> Jeez, oh, what a lunatic. Uh, anyway, um, so then somebody quoted Newton, which isn't a Newton quote, so I won't bother with that. And that's about, and then the link to the silly Despar crap. So that isn't all that interesting. Um, uh, so I don't know. I guess my Elizabeth comments uh, didn't stand. I just want to say again, I'll just say again, look, I don't mind people asking questions, blah, blah, blah. But really changing the subject, I'm not interested in doing. And right now, the subject are these basic ideas. What physics says a photon is and what physics says energy is. Those are the two big ones. Those ones will destroy all of their quantum mechanics and all of their accelerator nonsense. All of it's based on MV, one half mv squared and some silly notion that photons are wavicles. So you get rid of those two theories. You get rid of all the entanglement. You get rid of all the antiparticles. You get rid of all the bullshit. It all disappears. So... My focus is the foundation, because that's the rottenest part of physics. Their foundational assertions are where all the corruption is. Okay, Their silly assertion that four pounds dropped one foot is the same weight as one pound dropped four feet. Silly shit. Okay. Uh, so let me find that other little funny thing, and I'll call it a video. All right, so that, um, you know, military guy who did this Newton's Cradle that I politely made a video to, which was, again, a waste of time. He deleted my link right away. Um, so obviously, uh, he plays with balls, but apparently doesn't have any. Okay, <laughs> so, um, so, but this, this green slime guy had posted a comment two, three weeks ago on the very video, which is kind of ironic, right? I didn't see that you know, that he had uh, already found this guy's video. Um, I just found it. And um, I found it because, you know, he, he has death ray videos, you know, where you take a giant Fresnel lens and, you know, you can make a very powerful um, uh, beam of light, um, which is really kind of interesting that it really should be you know, if you could do that inexpensively, if I could make a Fresnel lens inexpensively, you're saying, gee, it's probably more efficient than solar cells, frankly. And all you need to do is find a way to store the heat. Okay, anyway. So, anyway, it's worth thinking about. Um, so, this moron, this green slime guy, he's one of, you know, the characters that lingers around the Brozosian pool. Um, you know, and he just says this, this silly shit where he has all these little emoticons in here and he says something like mentally diminished and I'm saying that as a person in my 80s, you know, well, you're saying it as an, an asshole. You were probably an asshole when you were 20 and an asshole when you were 30 and, you know, you've never been anything other than an asshole. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, it's just such bullshit to sit there and say, oh, there's nothing to argue here. Free momentum is so intuitively sensible. Yes, of course, <clears throat> 200, you know, 200,000 uh, joules of energy go into a car crash and only 1,000 one, 1, pops out. That makes perfectly good sense. No, it doesn't. Uh, anyway, so I said to him, my response video link was deleted, so it doesn't look like this guy's got big enough brain balls to provide any useful input. You call other people mentally diminished and you're the one playing with childish emoticons. You defenders of your old time religion really know how to do irony. All right, so the retarded 80 year old guy didn't, didn't bother <laughs> responding, but Watto did, which is Farley. So Farley says, why are you complaining? Your opponents like the green guy are such imbeciles that they promote you without you needing to do anything. Yes, it's like the Iron Gosling thing with the magnet. For fuck's sake, he's arguing a magnet doesn't have energy, uh, doesn't apply a force when it's constantly stuck to something, putting pressure on both surfaces, that anything you put between those surfaces will get squished. You could put something semi-rigid and over time it'll crush right into it. They sell magnetic clay now, you know, so you can 
you know play around with it but i mean obviously the motion is slow but it's inevitable it's always applying a force as they say in advertising all publicity is good publicity well see that's they say it in advertising but you don't see that too much though do you you really don't see too much where advertisers say hey it's really great that our you know ceo was convicted of child molesting you know it's not all good um, obviously the beer, right? Whatever beer it was that did the little prancy video, <laughs> you know, or whatever they did to offend all the males, you know, all the real men, uh, that didn't do them too good, right? Uh, as I believe you will know, I'm complaining because the subject deserves debate among people who can make reasonable arguments. It's just the simple truth that mushy under evidence science is just more silly religion. If a brain is going to do <clears throat> any good in the world, it has to have the truth in it, not silly stories. I thought it was a pretty good comeback. All right, and then the Watto guy says, uh, you are the guy in the canoe playing chicken with fully loaded super tanker. I don't know exactly how that even makes any sense. What's the big super tanker going to do? Go, f you know, 0.4 miles an hour at me? <laughs> you know, anyway... The crux of the debate is whether momentum is a vector or a scalar. It's, a, it's not the crux of the debate. The crux of the debate is, is whether uh, it's perfectly sufficient to understand that all movement, okay, is a mass moving. And the mass moving is all there is. And that's all you need. That's momentum. It answers all the questions. You want to know, you see something moving, you just have to ask what's its momentum and you know what force acted on it. Everything else follows one way or the other once you... <clears throat> Once that is decided, I don't. I don't see why I'd even. Why I'd even imagine whatever a scalar is. It just there's no way to even imagine it. So I'm saying, what's the point of you telling me that there's some debate about a scalar when I'm saying it has absolutely no form? It's the most irrational pile of shit I can imagine. Energy that doesn't have a direction. Ah, too silly. Too stupid. Fuck you. Um. Anyway, non-starter really. Um. If you believe that velocity is a vector, I believe that all motion is a vector. Duh. I've said that over and over and over about a million times. Okay. Then MV is also a vector since mass is a scalar. So I don't even know what that even... Why? why what does that even mean? Mass is a scalar. You, you, you really can't. You, mass doesn't mean anything, right? Weight is a vector. Weight has a direction. You can't have weight in all directions unless you're an explosion or something. On the other hand, if you insist that momentum is a scalar, well, I, again, why would I insist any such nonsense? Then you must declare that velocity is also a scalar. Why would I do any of these things? I mean, it's just, it's, it's so obnoxious to sit there and pretend that I haven't made it crystal clear. I believe in mass, okay? I've said it before, none of the matter moves by itself. It has to be pushed by a force and it has to be continually pushed by the force in the sense the force has to stick to it. All right, you cannot hold a self-contradictory position that velocity is a vector but momentum is a scalar. Well, again, it's, it's idiotic. I'm not saying any of this bullshit. It's not even an issue. Velocity isn't the subject. I mean, the fact that velocity has to have a direction is just so obvious that I, don't, I shouldn't even have to say anything. How could it not be a vector? I mean, it's just so stupid. It's about traveling a distance. How could you travel the distance and not be a fucking vector? Anyway, that violates basic math. Well, your math is such a pile of shit, so fuck you in the ass. I hope you die of math poisoning. Since a <clears throat> scalar times a vector is always a vector. Oh, says you, a holy ghost having sex with a pixie makes a gremlin. Um, oh, I mean, it's just so bad. <laughs> Uh, that is why it is called scalar, because it scales like a dragon. I don't know what he said, but fuck it. Oh, let's see. The idea that there is non-directional energy in the universe is holy ghost silly. The fact that you think it's some <clears throat> undeniable truth just proves you don't have the reasoning skills to distinguish between fact and fable. Motion is always a vector, and vectors never cancel, as every car crash in the history has proven. Energy can't be destroyed, and momentum is energy slash power. All movement must continue to move, from big things to little things, from little things to big things. Energy never stops. It's always going somewhere. 
The real point is this sentence. Direction doesn't have to be conserved, as the reflected photon and the bouncing ball prove. Okay. <sighs> Jesus, people are so fucking stupid. <sighs> All right, so that's enough. Yeah, fuck this. Uh, so yeah, fuck you know. I'm I'm like I said. The real point is, is I'm going to try to find somebody that can actually handle conversation. Because really, this has to be drawn out. It has to be explained. If people are going to claim there's free momentum, they have to clash, explain how we can't take advantage of it by some magical, you know, mechanism that uh, destroys our capacity to take advantage of free energy. Because it's really free momentum is free energy. All right. Anyway, till the next time and such. I, I'll just point out again too. We're you know you people who are harassing me. We know that physicist Michael says he was going to do this experiment with nice big pendulum. He's going to make this experiment happen. Where is it? <laughs> you know, we haven't seen it, have we? No, we haven't seen it. All right. Because it really should be written up as a paper. There's no paper anywhere, you know, of this experiment being done and written up in physics. So, um, you know, there's there's no, f they, they've never done any of these experiments. You know, four pounds drop one foot, one pound drop four foot. There's no paper. There's no, you know, there's no science to debunk because they haven't done the science. They just say it's true. They don't show you it true. Just like they say it takes... 25 times the fuel to go five times as fast they say it but where is it they say the eight pound bowling ball going twice the speed has twice the energy well show me no they'll never do it because it isn't true simple answer there's no evidence because it's not true <sighs> fuck so, they haven't done the Eddington ex experiment from space because it doesn't work. Simple answer. <laughs>